And welcome back to the Part-Time Otaku Podcast. My name is Dave. My name is Grant. And here we talk about Attack on Titan, or presently, that's what we're talking about, specifically Season 4, Episode 6. Um, today we're going to talk about our breakdown of the episode, what happened, so obviously... Spoilers ahead. We're an anime-only podcast, so we don't talk about manga spoilers or anything like that. Um, before we dive into this week's episode, we want to shout out and say thank you to all the new listeners that joined us last week and the week before that. Amazing Welcome. stuff. So, yeah. so, so surreal. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Super cool to know that people all over are listening to this. Uh, thanks for interacting with us on social media, on Reddit. It's been a total blast. And uh, thank you to Nate Artuz, or at Art of Nate, Nate spelled N-E-I-G-H-T, uh, for the awesome thumbnail uh, that we're using for this week's episode. Um, it's pretty impressive how quickly that he drew that up, because it looks like it's lifted straight from the episode. Um, Artists must just sit, like, with <laughs> art pad in hand when they watch the episodes. Like, it's you great. know, it's it's the time, the, the turnover time is unreal. It's crazy to me. Yeah, I mean, I think we'll probably end up talking about turnover time and artists and all that stuff in, in this episode. But yeah, it's crazy to me that people on their iPads can create stuff like this, um, just doing their thing. And I can't draw, you know, I can't draw anything even remotely symmetrical or I can't, you know, I'm bad at stick figures. M- mad respect. <laughs> yeah. So thank you again. Um, so yeah, we're going to jump right into this week's episode. We're going to change up the format a little bit. I'm going to start off with a quick summary of... Season 4, Episode 6, Attack on Titan, strap yourselves in. So, the episode opens on Willie before the declaration. He seems to be saying an emotional and potentially final goodbye to his family. He goes over his plan with Magath on the train, which seems to be to, to unite against Parody at all costs. He wants to unite the world, other nations, everybody against Parody. Those are, you know, his intention is to make them the ultimate bad guys. Willie is aware the parody forces have conspirators on the inside, which kind of confirms some of our theories last week. He intentionally groups incompetent soldiers in the VIP section of the theater. He knows he will likely die in the process of his declaration, but should serve to accomplish his goal of uniting everyone against a common enemy, specifically Aaron Yeager, because he you know, names him by name in his, uh, in his performance. From here, we flash to the present after the opening theme, and Aaron eats Willie and immediately launches an attack on the theater where he kills innocents and military forces alike. Both Udo and Zofia, the warrior candidates, are killed in the ensuing madness. Aaron gets the jump on and then fights the Warhammer Titan, who is revealed to be Willie's dark-haired sister. She's actually been the one who's been dressed as a maid until now. Um, the Warhammer Titan's powers appear to be creating anything they need using the armor ability so swords crossbows giant hammers um during the fight marley shoots at aaron with anti-titan cannons commander magath reveals his intention is not to kill aaron here but to have a titan eat him so that they can regain the founding titan for their side aaron seems to be losing the fight and he comes out of his titan which signals mikasa who dramatically shows up to back him up and blows a hole in the warhammer titan's nape though this later proves to be ineffective The dialogue between Eren and Mikasa here suggests that there's some turmoil between him and the scouts. Pock and Piek are rescued by a panzer unit who were tipped off to follow them by Piek in the last episode. Gabby is horrified at the carnage. She has witnessed Sophia's death, Udo's death, which is particularly rough, and the death of two guards that were trying to help her, who were incidentally killed by Sasha. Gabby takes up arms and seems filled with some very familiar rage that is reminiscent of season one Eren. The scouts arrive and bomb the Marley military and upgraded ODM gear. They seem to have plans involving placing lights around the city. Aaron discovers the Warhammer Titan's weakness and turns the tides of the fight by unplugging her AC power adapter while she's being distracted by Mikasa. Before Aaron is able to eat the Warhammer Titan, he's attacked by Galliard from behind. Galliard is in turn attacked by Levi and the squad, and Galliard seems particularly terrified by the audacity and coordination of the scouts. Levi and squad move in on him, and we roll straight to credits. Let me get up on the mic here, Dave. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what an episode. Action-packed, man. I mean, you know, they did a really good job delivering after four to five episodes of Build. Um, yeah, the release yeah. is serene. It's uh, it's something else. Like, <laughs> the, the re- <laughs> you know? Like, <laughs> the release is a good choice of words. <laughs> seriously, like, this, this episode held back at no point in the episode or it did not hold back at any point like it was 
it was absolutely like I think I think we said this last week, and I'm sure I said it the week before, but like this is Attack on Titan, baby. Like you yeah, know, man. this is this is what we love. We got you know the political intrigue. You know, we, you know the the balls to the walls Titan action. Finally, some like Titan fights. You know, yeah. very re- very reminiscent of the Annie fights. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, yeah. This. This is the show kind of fully dialed into what it does best, which is action and quick cuts, character reactions. They did a really, really good job of panning from Aaron to the scouts that were all over the city to Magith. And then also to like all these characters that we've just met, like Gabby and Colt and, you know, their perspective. To me, this whole episode felt like a complete parallel to the pilot of the show. Mm. Season one, episode one, what happens? It's, you know, kind of like a wonderful day. Well, not in paradise, but a typical day. Peaceful. Then the Colossal Titan attacks. People everywhere are killed. There's even a guy who's killed in the exact same way as Zofia is killed. Like, there's Mm. a shot of a guy buried by a rock. People are trying to get him out, but they can't. Brutal. Tons of parallels. And it hits so good because we know and care about these characters now. Yeah. Very... um... You know, like, it was so organic. You know, at, you know, at first it was a surprise, you know, when the season four opened and, you know, we're, we're meeting, like, the warrior candidates and all that. And, you, you know, they were trying to get us comfortable for something. Yep. But I cannot believe in a span, I guess it would have been four episodes before all the action kicked off. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just such an organic, you know, liking, likening to these characters, you know, like, uh, with the exception of Udo and Zofia, which, I, you know, I find funny. We forgot their names forgot Udo's name two weeks in a row and he, you know, he's iced the way that he is. And, you know, I, I felt bad about forgetting his name. I guess it doesn't matter now. He gone, but uh, uh, a tad disposable, but I, I, I agree. But you know what I mean? Like the, even then, like they had, he had some moments of like, you know, we got, he gave us the kind of backstory of the, the intermacants across the world, yeah. you know, like good filler and like meaningful filler. It's all in all, like it's a good it, exposition dump character. And also yeah. like, um, you know, the fact that he was a warrior candidate, that he had his own circumstances that he was going through. But I think what they did best with his character was his death. Yeah. Um, Zofia gets crushed by a boulder. You don't, you know, there's no death speech. There's no... Yeah, off-screen death. Yeah. yeah, off-screen death. But Udo is much more of a casualty of madness that results in, you know, you know the madness that is result in, in, in violence. Like, he's literally trampled to death by a crowd stampeding their way out because they're so terrified. Yeah, because he was alive at first, right? And yeah. and then, well, he yeah. he goes for Sophia, I think. Like he kind of dives for her, and then in the ensuing you know stampede, like gets caught up in it. Yeah, so that was rough. Um, before we like get into the breakdown of all the you know the cool moments throughout the episode, we should probably mention, or at least quickly cover the things that we got right from last episode. We made a couple of predictions that I was actually happily surprised that came true. <laughs> um. I think maybe the boldest one that I made, or or you one of us made, was that Willie was totally aware he was going to his death. For sure, yeah. Um, and that there were potential conspirators on the inside. I think we talked about that, you know, earlier in the season. Mm. Um, but it sounds like you know Willie and Magath are aware that Aaron has friends on the inside. So I wanted, I did want to talk talk about that. I now think that might just be referring to Falco. You think so? I think, I don't know, because even, like, there's the uh, Madame Azumabito character. I I'm, don't... I'm still I don't, on that. Yeah, I don't know if, again, in my opinion, I don't know if she's uh, if she's working with, like, Aaron and co, or just mm-hmm. Aaron, which we found it, which was very revealing, very interesting in this episode. Um, Wait, what do you mean by that? Well, just, like, you know, Aaron and is not might not exactly be on the up and up with the rest oh, yes, of the original yes, yes. cast you know like yeah. um i don't necessarily think that azuma Bido is kind of in on the situation i think she is just more of a heightened character as willie true and is and is might just been more fully aware and i think she was i think she also knew that willie was going to die and like you know yeah. she seemed kind of proud of him in that moment when she has that you know he says like backstage speech that he has with her um wishing him luck in the whole bit yeah yeah so that's the thing too like I think, you know, the conversation William McGath had prior, you know, out, out in like when the stage was being built a couple mm-hmm. episodes prior, I think that might have been referring to like the military, you right. know, like the like 
they're the rats in the system kind of thing. Yeah, because I, they, they specifically, Willie specifically said to place incompetent soldiers in the VIP section. Yeah. So that's fair. Which if, was like, it seems to be all like the high generals. <laughs> you know, yeah, like the majority because, of the military. Because he actually says to Magath as well, once you rebuild the military, right? So yeah. that's one of my points later on is they're clearly playing a long game here. Yeah. It sounds like, you know, this is like a, a chess move. Like, let's sacrifice the early game so that we can play the long game which i'm super interested to see how that plays out <laughs> yeah but but again i do and I, again this is just my my take on it i think the like the conspirator is just a reference to falco they don't okay. know it is falco but the rats reference earlier i think that is more leaning along the lines of like the the high-ranking military that they're trying sure. to clear out fair point i'm still on the Azuma Bito is an inside agent, sleeper sure. cell, Russian sleeper mm. cell. She's just waiting for her, her, you know, the magic sequence of words to be spoken, and she'll sure. be activated as an assassin, like, uh, you know, the Winter Soldier. Ooh. I, I'm kidding. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I do think she's on the inside. But I guess we'll see. Um, another thing that we got right, which was pretty obvious, was that Willy was definitely not the Warhammer Titan. I mean, yeah, there's no way. You know, it would have been too convenient. He held all the literal power for being the head of the family. And then on top of that, also being the Warhammer Titan would probably just make him too valuable of an asset, both literally and as a character. So mm-hmm. that was a definite no, no. And then the last one is uh, that I can think of grant is Piek. She warned the Panzer unit. Yeah. You saw that for sure. Um, which was a you know pretty astute move by her kind of ups her street cred for me a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, can you think of anything else? I think that was, that was pretty much the last one. Yeah, uh, I think there. I think there might have been a couple other things. Nothing that comes to mind right now. But we we had talked a lot. We had a lot of, we threw a lot of hail mary theories last episode, I believe. So yeah. there was, you know, re- while Aaron, you know, the reveal of Aaron turning into the Titan kind of just left our imagination to run wild. So it's similar to how this episode ends. Um, it's going to be hard to make predictions for this one because. Mm. It's in it's at the beginning slash in the middle of a conflict, which is yep. the same as last week. So it's like that's kind of tricky to, to predict for. But I think we have a, a couple ideas. Yeah. Um, there is one piece of trivia, though, that I have to talk about right now because it's blew my mind. And it is by complete crazy happenstance that I caught this because, you know, I was randomly looking on YouTube and I saw this stupid attack on Titan clip of like, you know, there's all these you know, five second clips that are usually just highlighting like a good joke in the sure. series. Yeah. But it was from the pilot. It was from season one, episode one, Aaron's having a dream and it's like a fever dream. You know, one of those like, Oh, there's lots of foreshadowing and clips in this dream that you'll later see throughout the series. I don't know if you remember this, but they're little things like he sees his mom dying. He sees bloody flowers that later appear when Hannes is killed later at the end of season two. Mm-hmm. And the, one of the first shots is a bed on which there are a ton of toys displayed. And that's how this episode opens when Willie is at home saying goodbye to his family. All those toys belong to his kids. Wow, I totally missed that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I mean, I obviously, it's not like I saw this shot and I knew. I just, I saw the shot recently and I was like, that looks, you know, kind of similar. And then I went back and checked. And they use the exact frame in the pilot of the sh- of the entire series wow. that they use to um, you know to show this one, which was super super cool. God, love this show. Isn't that killer? <laughs> it's awesome. I wonder if they did that. You know, we don't read the manga, but I wonder if they did that in the manga, like a fever dream, like cut up frames that they're later gonna splice in. But either way, you know, someone had the foresight to uh, to do this kind of stuff, and I I, I love it. Yeah, and we've said it time and time, like, the rewatch of this show is going to be unparalleled, you know, just, uh, well, you, you, I think you're in the process of rewatching now, you're probably up to season three again, I would imagine, but um, it's just to, to see from that different angle, like, I, I'm i really looking forward to that. Yeah, 100%. Um, do you got anything in the beginning of the show that caught your eye, or just general observations? No, well, the I, I really enjoyed, I again... My guy, McGath, um, I've come yeah. full circle. He is now my guy. Uh, the conversation he has with Willie. Um, oh, so good. Very telling. Mm-hmm. It was It was kind of like, uh, you can tell McGath is not super keen on the whole internment uh, zone plan. Yeah, which you I, know, again, didn't see coming. 
he he has showed moments of like caring, you know, like like I like I think he's Marley in through and through. I don't think he mm-hmm. is Elton at all. Like, I don't think he could get to that rank mm-hmm. if that was the case. But you know, there's there's the line, you know, uh, Willie kind of you know comes back on McGath about like you know don't go soft on me now, mm-hmm. more or less. You know, like you know it's you've been killing devils your whole life kind of thing. You've been sending them to war, and just the way. McGath has the rebuttal of like no you're right like yeah like you're, you're right they are devils but the way he says but you and I like were devils mm-hmm. was like the had nothing to do with like it was like two the word was used for two different meetings and it was just kind of like letting kind of like not putting Willie on blast but I kind of took it as like just so you know like we are no good we are doing a, this. yeah we're not necessarily a lesser evil here yeah you know like we I mean? are evil Mag- yeah. uh, Magath was talking about the death toll and Willie again is like yeah but so what they're all going to be Eldians you've done this before um, and we're playing the long game you know not a ton of compassion there but it, it was interesting to hear the military leader talk about yeah but what about all the lives that we're not going to be able to save yeah. um, not what I saw coming in that convo too man they've done this all season where they literally lift lines of dialogue from previous seasons and kind of put them in new characters' mouths. Mm. And it's not lazy. It's completely intentional to For create sure. parallels. And McGath says lines that are straight out of season two, season one, two, three, where he literally says, we don't know who the enemy is, when they will attack, or what their goal is. Because mm. they're in the dark. They know something bad is coming, but they don't know from what direction and, and you know, what the end game is. Because um, they're, you know, they're anticipating something from Aaron. But... You know, it was crazy because I, I was, you know, as you mentioned, I've been rewatching, and in season two, there's this crazy scene where Aaron is just screaming, as he was a lot back then, <laughs> at uh, Ymir and Reiner, and he's like, "Who is the enemy? Like, just who? What? what what's the goal?" Yeah. You know, the Armin too in season three is like, "If only we had more information." Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? When they were, you know, strategizing all these tactics and stuff, like they were constantly robbed of insight, and it's just crazy to see. Magath frustrated by that especially when they've already been infiltrated yeah um and you know untold numbers of them are about to be killed i i loved that parallel yeah it's and and i think we have mentioned this before too like of any season season two i find has the most like obviously now like the past couple episodes a lot more reference to season one but i found the lead up was very reminiscent of season two yeah and very heavily pulling from you know it it's like I said, they they wanted us to see the other side of the world, right? They you know they wanted to see the same types of characters in a different setting, but like every at the end of the day, everyone's the same, you know. It's, yeah, uh, season two did a good job early because um, it's again fresh in my mind and uh, similar types of stuff. They invested early in character development and in backstory. Yeah. Um, so that later when they rip your heart through your chest, yeah. <laughs> uh, it matters. And same same thing here. Um, so so killer to back up t- one quick sec on is it willie's sister the warhammer titan yeah okay um one neat again a neat detail that i didn't catch but uh in the, in the moment because why would i was that if you remember back in season t- uh, or what was it episode two of this season when willie is talking to mcgath about which one of them could possibly be the Warhammer Titan, and it's, like, flashing to their family. Yeah, it kind of cuts across the room. Yeah, she was never, like, in the flash. She was the person waiting on the family as a maid because she was always a maid detail. Oh. And at the beginning of this episode, she's in her maid uniform, kind of standing at the door like a guard. Mm. You know, and then obviously she's later revealed to be uh, the Warhammer Titan, but I thought that was, again, yet another, like, cool detail that is so easy to miss. A lot of... A lot of, you know, again, I, I keep saying this, blink and you miss it moments. And I, I never assumed the show to be that. But now I, I think feel like I, need, I feel like I need to go back and, like, really scan the show, you know? Like, just almost watch it at half speed. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's dude, if you want, I got another one of those coming up because, or I'll just tell you right now. <laughs> it's, okay, you know the uh, drunk guy that yeah. uh, from the festival and he gets crushed by a boulder? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... This is in season three, or I'm sorry, season four, episode three of this episode. This is the guy that was getting kind of gropey. Getting kind of gropey with Gabby yeah. and Zofia. And he's like, you know, he's getting kind of gropey with the warrior candidates. He's a creep. And then 
he's is one of his friends is like leave the freaking kids alone you know and there's a line that he says to them and he basically says oh your praise is bad luck and then a black cat walks across him <laughs> oh really i don't yeah. remember that we, and like this that is so campy and not and like not something i would expect of attack on titan but they they reference bad luck in front of this guy and then they have a black cat walk across his shop <laughs> and then you know he's drunk in this episode and is violently crushed to death by a boulder a lot of people are yeah there's just not you yeah. know you can't convince me that that's all coincidence that is absolutely intentional and partly hilarious that's so funny um but yeah that's another thing like how could we possibly have picked that up like um, yeah hindsight eh? <laughs> yeah it's fucking crazy but i don't again i only saw that because i saw i was flipping through recently so that was pretty crazy um the next moment we should probably talk about is the actual titan fight which starts off amazing yeah um because you know the warhammer titan is in the middle of her transformation like a dragon ball z episode and Aaron's oh, yeah. like i'm not waiting for this to finish no she just right into decks it. her in the face <laughs> did you like that yeah, for sure. And that was that was the thing, too. And I think, you know, you and I had kind of briefly talked about this uh, before, and it's definitely evident in this episode. The CG mm-hmm. was very jarring. Oh, I found, I'm like... I'm so glad you mentioned it. Yeah, specifically, specifically uh, Aaron, like the Attack Titan stuff. Yep. Um, I found whenever, like, the Warhammer was, you know, mobile and, you know, actually involved in the fight like you know reciprocating it kind of looked a little more natural i don't know if maybe it was just like the color palette it, that's exactly what i was gonna say i think it's not so harsh on on that color yeah and but i found like at first you know when it when aaron kind of comes to like after he eats willie does the look around and then like it's so funny makes like the running tackle into like the military <laughs> like oh, he goes in with four he goes in with elbows and knees oh yeah just like like rides right into it in wwe style yeah <laughs> And I saw that, and I was like, well, this isn't too bad. This is kind of, like, similar to, like, when Reiner landed Mm -hmm. uh, from the blimp. Mm -hmm. Like, there was that moment of kind of, like, jiltedness. And and then, you know, he gets up, and then, you know, obviously, like, the Warhammer Titan, like, reveals herself. And then it's just like, oh, that's kind of ugly. You know, like, it just... Yeah. It was was very strange. And even... uh, This is going to sound strange when, again, jumping ahead here, but, like, the faces they did in this episode, like Mikasa's face was very unsettling. They used C- They I don't know if they've done that in this season or if MAPPA has done that yet, but they used CG on just a character face. And I was like, why? I mean, presumably... Oh, that was... Her face was CG? Yeah, they CG'd her for, in one frame when she has tears in her eyes, which we'll, we'll get to, but I don't know why they did that. I mean, you, I mean, the answer, the short answer to why you use CG is like to save money and time. Sure. And I understand that. Um... But I'm yeah, that was a really weird, really really weird decision. Oh, maybe that's just why it, it seemed off to me. Because even then, there's moments I th- I think uh, flock too. That's uh, same thing, dude. And then, uh, Jean, Jean. I know we always called him Jean. Is it yeah. Jean? Yeah. Well, I think it's you know Jean or Jean. I'm imagine, calling him Jean. I'm, I'm actually him Jean. <laughs> imagine he's just like French Canadian. He's like yeah. It's actually Jean Louis. Uh, Jean Louis. Uh, Enchanté. Uh, <laughs> no, like even like there was a moment with Jean. I was kind of like, oh fuck, like that's that's a little ugly. Yeah. And but let, um, go ahead. But it's just and you know I find it's I found it very strange. Again, I'm I'm all over the place here, but we're on the subject of the CG. Like the scouts, like when they were in the ODM gear in the previous seasons, there was no CG for that. That was all hand drawn. I think so. Yeah. Or you know, like there's certain pieces. And and before we get into this like whole CG conversation, I do want to note like I've seen lots of online chatter of people like yelling at the animators who made these oh scenes, which is like so borderline over the top and ridiculous. Because I think we'll both agree this is an amazing episode. Map sure. is doing oh. a fantastic job. There's like no reason to shame anybody that worked on it because it's you know we're doing a podcast about it. It's like our favorite anime. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But you know that said like you know it definitely merits discussion if it looks off you know because we went a long time with it looking pretty decent and then it's a change in pace when like you you know there is a shot of Aaron that looks like you know he's framed in like a broken wall at one point and Mm -hmm. it looks like someone drew this beautiful 
arch behind him and he's like a plastic object just paste it on top yeah no i know exactly um, what you're talking about so we're not like dumping on it but you know it definitely merits like bringing up if it if it's different enough that you notice and it takes you out of the experience i think it's worth mentioning i will say like i think i found the biggest for me personally the biggest offender on my like you know i guess the whole point when you watch something it's you want to be like completely in you know enraptured by it. like mm-hmm. you, like disbelief you know mm-hmm. Um, you kind of want it all melt together. I f- so for me personally, the biggest offender was the ODM gear in some in some shots. It was yeah. so strange. Like I think there's there's a moment where I think uh, Sasha tells Connie like, "Oh, you forgot to do the lights," which you know we'll, we'll get to that later. But and Connie goes, "Oh yeah," and then I think it's like a shot of him like you know shooting away to go proceed to climbing do that, up but, to do it, yeah. Or not climbing up, but like I, th- I think it's when he leaves from doing the light. Oh, okay. And it's like a CG shot of him, like kind of like you know, ODMing away. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh my god, he looks like Plato. Like it was just, it was so. I don't know if it was the backdrop to him and like the like the natural kind of like the light effect yeah. they were using for the episode, but but yeah, Aaron, I, yeah, Aaron, Aaron looked a little odd, and then the ODM gear at moments was pretty pretty gross, but the Warhammer Titan looked awesome. Even in the moments that like was clearly like you know the movement, her movements were very weird. Yeah, um, I don't know if that was intentional or. or I don't what, think but... so. I mean, it felt a little inhuman, kind of plasticky. Yeah. You know, like I think again, given you know this is all about time and and budget, right? Um, yeah. I'm ninety nine percent certain because I've read it in like thirty places that they're not even done animating this season, right? They're on a schedule that is still ongoing, mm. so like they're actively still working on this on a pretty tight schedule. And I well, think yeah. it, it shows sometimes when you just don't have time. Because I think, in my experience, it never has anything to do with lack of talent. It is always lack of time and budget. 100%. Um, like, even back in season or episode one, same studio, same CG, they did little things. Like, they did all of Galliard's Titan in CG. But when his claw would come down and grab something, they mm. would hand draw that one part. Yep. Because the impact resonates a lot better when... You know, when, when it's hand-drawn, but you could probably get away with CGing the rest. Anyway, I didn't want to have a whole tangent on that, but I totally agree. It took me out of it a couple times. Yeah. Um, we were just talking about Aaron ambushing and then fighting the attack or the uh, Warhammer Titan. Mm-hmm. I will say the effects of her abilities were pretty cool. Yeah. And I thought it was super badass to see Aaron, you know, he definitely lost that fight. But for sure, <laughs> it was cool to see him, you know, his combat had still taken a step up. Did mm. you notice the little things like he had the brass knuckles on real quick? He yep. was protecting his nape when the Marley and anti-Titan cannons got down on him. Yeah, absolutely. So that was pretty cool. Yeah, it, it just show. Yeah, it just goes to show like Aaron, it, it, the four years has been a long time for Aaron. And Fuck yeah. it's... I wonder how much of this time has been him honing his skills on his own, mm-hmm. like away from the group. Like there's clearly some odd off group dynamic going on right now. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, just the, even the fight, like the shot of the Warhammer Titan, like when she finally has a moment to like strike back after Aaron's been pummeling her for like what seems like 35 seconds and the spire erupts, like just like the twin, like the, the glint in her eye and the spire yeah. releases from her. I was like, oh my God, we are, like, it's on now. <laughs> like it's officially like, you know, both, both members are in this fight. Yeah. It was very cool stuff. It was an even cooler shot when you saw it like pan, like from a distance, they show you how high Aaron is in the air. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, that was super cool. And it was cool that he ripped himself off and kept fighting you know he was not he seemed to be in control we didn't get like those helmet cam iron man shots no (laughs) um but that was pretty cool but it was worth it was worth him getting his ass kicked just for like the reveal of you know mikasa and the scouts like you know mikasa now or never is gonna go down as one of the dopest lines in this show (laughs) so fucking cool dude um (laughs) so hype you know i loved i loved the dialogue again like even through translation, I cannot believe how poignant the dialogue is. It's crazy mm-hmm. that it's hitting so well because, you know, the Warhammer Titan is calling him a usurper, which is, yeah. like, awesome. Yeah. She's, you know, she's like, hey, you got any final words? He busts out that dope-ass line. Before Mikasa rescues him, though, which is fucking killer, I really loved that, you know, it 
we flash to Piek and Galliard getting out because of the Panzer unit. Oh, yeah. yeah. They're getting ready. And that's the first time you see ODM gear, the scouts flying through the skies. And, you know, that... Chills. Chills, dude. Literal chills. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't say that lightly, but, like, they've used the same sound effect for the ODM gear since the, you know, since the pilot. So you know exactly what it is when you hear it. And it might be easy to forget, but Piek has seen them in action because she was on Parody Island as well. She was scared shitless when which she is, saw that. Yeah. Which was very telling of like, oh, yeah. <laughs> totally <laughs> <You know? laughs> agree. She, so she's afraid, which is a great sign. I mean, depending on how you feel about it. But so she's clearly nervous and you get that like fucking killer. I thought it was a gr- I think it was 99% or 100% CG. This was a CG scene they nailed was that like point of view um odm you know weaving between buildings yeah that kind of stuff that has become Mm kind of like synonymous with the animation in in attack on titan that was so cool to see especially because it's it's the first time we're seeing it in a new city yeah um that was killer and then yeah mikasa's entrance was fucking badass (laughs) like to see i was and that was interesting too because you know she comes whipping in and you know she like the thunderbolts um, thunder spears or thunder spears sorry the nails well it. thunderbolts nails it you know like the whole like pull of the trigger like just what an entrance and then seeing her have the guns i was like oh like you know like like and then and then shortly after like you see the rest of the titans or the rest of the scouts and everyone's like armed up with guns and gear and like it's modern the second i saw them with the guns i was like oh like i don't think the marlins stand a chance yeah i totally agree i mean yeah. it, it was clear you know, that the scouts in particular um, have been so well-versed in warfare at this point because they've been tied, fighting titans for so long. They've been so out-geared or out-classed yeah. um, that the moment that they got their hands on some more modern technology, they were going to be fucking dangerous. Yeah, and, you could and see it shows. That. It yeah. shows. When they all show up, dude, and they blow, you know, because Mikasa's entrance uh, comes in at the same time as backup arrives and attacks the uh marley and soldiers that were shooting at aaron like you could tell because the rest of the episode is just straight up warfare and you could tell marley was just getting picked off left right and center scouts it was, were too fast i can't this is probably one of the most like brutal like human on human scenes i've seen in a show or like like anything like they were just like lobbing bombs mm-hmm. into the streets onto buildings into buildings and we got to talk about, like, Magath the cat. Like, he must have nine lives. Yeah. That, like, that was, like, the, one of my few nitpicks of, the sh- of this episode. That is plot armor at play. <laughs> yeah, because he survives... Temporary plot armor. <laughs> yeah, he survives twice. He, yeah. he survives getting bombed on the roof by the scouts. And then yeah. he's holed up in a little room. And to be fair, he's, like, dumping exposition the whole time. He's like, oh, yeah. you guys aren't going to have a chance once the world unites. All you've done is guarantee that your victory will be short-lived. Which is fine and good, and then another bomb comes in, and he fucking survives that. You see him being carted away later with just like a little scratch. Yeah, the second one I was kind of that. The first one I, I I was like, yeah, like I get that he could get away from that, but the second one like what seemed was right in front of him. Like in what time would he be able to get out of there? Unless he went out the window, but even then he would have just been picked off. I again I agree that was for a character that I do like. I found that to be a bit of a nitpick. but you know. I assume, yeah, it's plot armor, but like, have we seen that before? Absolutely, it's everywhere, not just in anime. So, I, oh, assume, absolutely. I assume that means that he has a role to play, so I'm interested to see what they do with him. Because he also has a cool moment, too. I found I found it interesting when he survived the uh, the second bomb, you know, because he takes the first shot. And then there's also, like, he makes a reference a couple scenes later about, like, let it be known that I'm the one that took the first shot yeah what do you think that was about that uh, i that's one of the few things i've been like i've been thinking about a lot is is that him like beginning the his and willie's play into like taking dominance over the we military? are responding to a direct attack yeah type thing yeah i had this thought it's probably dumb but i had this thought that aaron waited intentionally for willie to declare war before killing him Mm. So that he had some kind of sleep, clean slate or carte blanche to, for his actions that took place afterwards. At the same time, I don't think Aaron is super concerned with the politics and, and all that. But you never know. But 
I was like, did Aaron intentionally time it to, so that he had to leave to go on a rampage? But then he killed a bunch of innocent people, so probably not. Yeah, I don't know. I, I kind of I chalked up uh, Aaron's like, you know, the attack titan reveal as more like more the theme of like theatrics of like the previous episode, you know, like Willie's whole play and you know, oh, kind of like I, I kind of just you know the finale, like the grand finale of the show. Yeah. In, in more than one way it was you know Aaron revealing himself you know to the crowd as the usurper and also like kind of it kind of caps off like the, the play itself the theater play itself and then you know it kind of plot wise it pushes it forward to where we are so I, I more or less thought that but it could be too Aaron could be waiting if he is trying to safe potentially save face down the road it would make sense it kind of lines up that way mm-hmm. i don't know if anyone's going to see it that way because he murders the shit out of a lot of innocent people so let's let's talk about that so when mikasa does save him you know that for a sec there we think the warhammer titan is but bit the dust from her uh her thunder spears doesn't turn out to be the case but we get a, a bit of dialogue between the two of them it's only a few lines but again it's packed with with history and hints that there's some turmoil, right? So he says, you actually came, right? So, you mm-hmm. know, to me, I don't want to pick over the syllables here, but like he doesn't say a lot. So he says, you actually came. So I think he's a bit surprised. And she mm. just says, please come home. Yeah, you can tell, you can tell how far he's strained because like those are the first words she says to him. Yeah, so I don't want to over-dramatize, but I do feel like you know with the next conversation they have she talks about you've done things that can't be undone and she Mm. puts the emphasis on like you've done this you killed children you killed the innocent and it kind of feels like you know she might be not blaming him but a lot of this is on Aaron 100 percent. and it makes me think this is my theory that Aaron may have just put those letters that no you know undoubtedly got to the scouts but it feels like he might have forced their hand. Absolutely. And, he's using them. He's right? using his relationship with them. So he's like, I'm going to act. I'm going to do this. You need to come and help me. And it feels like, you know, you know, you might ask, what pair, what power does Aaron have over the scouts, over Levi and Hanj and all these people? But you, for, you realize, like, he's literally their most valuable asset now that we understand that he has the founding titan. Yeah. So if he loses, they lose. Yeah. So it feels like they had to come as backup. Absolutely. And also, too, like, you're trying to tell me, like, Armin, who also is, like, a very key asset now for them as, like, the Colossal Titan. Mm-hmm. Like, Armin and Mikasa were going to, you know, at, at the drop of a dime, like, they would be out there to help him. It was funny, when the when Mikasa said those lines, like, her first lines to Aaron, the first thing I thought of, Dave, was, I wonder if Jean was there looking for Aaron. Oh fuck, man! That's a good pick. Yeah, that was the, that was the first thing I thought of. Like maybe if anyone would do it, yeah, yeah. Like he was going undercover. Like I bet you'd like try and maybe, get him out of there. Try and get him out of there, and hopefully try and not make a scene. Like obviously this is you know just me thinking, but that was no, the first I like thing. That. I, that was the first thing I thought of. Was like oh like maybe because Aaron like the second the war was over, like he it almost seemed like he beeline for that hospital, right? Like he didn't. I, yeah. I can see that much of an option because you know like they probably just carted him to the hospital, but. Mm-hmm. You know, Aaron would have had to have known, like, his grandfather was there. It just, it, everything seemed so perfectly planned for Aaron. Mm-hmm. Like, as if, you know, like, they didn't know where he was. So, clearly they didn't. So, you know, and obviously we do find out that was Gene that we saw, I think, in the first episode. Yeah, I mean. Because yeah. they have this exact same outfit of when the train goes by. Or I think I don't think it's a train. I think it's, like, a carriage. Yeah. When McGath and Willie are having their chat. There's Facial hair is the same, all that yeah. stuff. Newspaper the whole night. So, <laughs> That, I guess that would be, like, another theory that we got right of, like, you know, Jean, Jean's been there at least a little bit longer. Maybe doing recon for the mission. Maybe trying that's to the, get Aaron yeah. back. That could be the thing. He could be there, like, just in case Aaron does that. Because that, that could be the thing. Like, they must not have been too far. Because they must have known Aaron headed there. Mm-hmm. So they probably had to keep a safe distance. So, I don't know. There's That's that's just my, my, my idea on it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then from here, I mean, you know, there's a ton before they end up figuring out the uh, Warhammer Titan. We get a lot of cuts showing um, what Gabby's going through. Mm. So, you know, she's running through the streets. You know, they're trying to get Udo to the hospital because he's been trampled to death. 
there's you know there's too many wounded they can't get him a spot it's just her colt and udo well not really udo because he dies um and you know everywhere around her there's death there's destruction and you know she runs away to try and help right because she she is young but she has been in a war before because she's a warrior candidate yeah absolutely and i think one of the highlights of, of the episode is you know she's trying to help she's getting turned away by these guards who are actually looking out for her and they get bodied by Sasha. i think i think those are the same guards from the episode where like kind of falco reveals that he cares for her and they're like kind of like making the comments like, oh yeah. like he said it like she clearly has a relationship with them that she called she called them mr door gate or gate <laughs> guard or something like that um so yeah she, she had a relationship with them and they both get bodied but by of all people it's sasha which is super fitting because she's always been a sniper it's crazy like now she's but got, this the time she's got a gun yeah she's got the weaponry to like really show her talent and there's just this moment where they both kind of look at each other and gabby just has so much hatred in her eyes and sasha's mm. <laughs> just staring daggers right back i don't see that's the thing i don't think sasha was scaring daggers back you can tell i think sasha's in the camp of like fuck aaron like i oh, can't yeah. believe you made us do this i don't think sasha was contemplating killing a kid either but i think that sasha was there you know on a mission for sure and those officers were in the way so they're gonna catch a bullet i will say so i got a bit of a spicy take i officially am i could gabby annoys the shit out of me yes okay yeah you, you go first you go first it's just like i understand the show in my opinion this is like the most unsuccessful attempt by like the by mappa or i guess the show Mm mm-hmm to make me feel for the new cast. True. Um, like, they, they made all these parallels to the previous, se- you know, previous seasons mm-hmm. and the, uh, the rest of the gang. Like, I understand Gabby is upset. Like, you know, her friends and family are being, like, absolutely annihilated right now. Like, I, I 100% side with that. Mm-hmm. But, like, she... You know, when Aaron when Aaron's mother was eaten and like the wall, like all they had ever known was their life in the walls. Mm -hmm. The Titans were out there and like they were massacred that way. And that was like, you know, due to Reiner and, you know, Marley itself, Mm -hmm. Gabby getting all upset and fiery. They've knowingly, like she's a part of the system that caused all that pain to all these innocent people on the Island who had for a long time have had nothing to do you know, what, like, historically, with, like, mm-hmm. the, the beef between the Eldians. And just her being all, like, gritty and angry. And it's just kind of like, like, I get it and I understand it, but it's like, fuck off. You know what, you know what I mean? Like it's, You feel like her suffering isn't really comparable to what Aaron and co. were going through? It sounds kind of silly, because she's a part of the machine that has been causing pain to the mm-hmm. other side for such yeah. a long time. Yeah. And she got punched back for once. And she's, and she's throwing a bit of a tantrum. I understand tantrum is putting it lightly, because... The, the scene that is set is like quite brutal and yeah. very upsetting but uh it's it's just the first time where it's like i get it. like i i got all the reiner stuff i got the falco stuff you know like the even like annie's always been a psychopath but the few moments we've had with her over the season mm-hmm. um also kind of a weird callback to annie with the uh the the pod the crystal pod for the warhammer titan <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll have to talk about that in a yeah. sec. To wrap the wrap up Gabby, I, I totally get where you're coming from. I think, you know, I don't necessarily disagree that she's annoying, but what I will say is that young Aaron was so fucking annoying. Yeah. His hatred was so annoying. But, you know, on top of being a b- literally brainwashed child, because that's yeah. exactly what she is. Oh, absolutely. She's yeah. now seeing these people who she already hated without ever having met them, just yeah. because of the way that she was brought up. She's seen these people cause direct death and destruction in her hometown the one place she's ever been safe yeah and they have this shot of her gritting her teeth which is like almost a perfect again like a perfect frame of aaron doing the same thing in the pilot or uh doing the same thing not in the pilot but when the colossal uh, titan attacks again and he's about Mm -hmm. to join the scouts when he's a little bit older almost the exact same shot both of them just look at you know like really angsty teenagers you know he goes and like grabs his gear at that point she goes and grabs a gun and like sets off i think that all it really guarantees is that you know this radicalization is a complete circle yeah absolutely you know what i mean you know she she will now you know go the other way and is going to try and hurt as many people on that side as possible i again i i think 
her paint, like what has happened is very realistic. And I, I buy it like as her character, I 100% buy it. I think it's very natural, like the way it kind of played mm-hmm. out. And like, I'm not saying she's a bad character. It's just, it's, it's kind of annoying. But it irritated you. Know? you. Yeah. No, it it yeah. was just, it was just slightly irritating. It's like, yeah, like I know, I know you're upset and I know you're going, again, this is about a, you know, a show right now and it might seem silly, but no. it just kind of, it just kind of irks me a little bit. bit. Also from the get go, like just like the a moments too. Brat. A total brat. And like, you know, like in the first episode when she kind of like saves the, the day at the mm-hmm. war and all that and like taking all the credit and like, as she did, like, again, not talking down to her accomplishments, but it's just like, ah, like you kind of suck. But like, it's, it's like you said, jumped little shite. Yeah. Well, Aaron was the same way too, though. He like was. It's, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I feel you. Um, after that, it is pretty much you know the, the last few frames of the episode where um, Aaron has his brainwave and goes in, into the Matrix and realizes that uh, you just gotta you gotta unplug her from the wall. That was a cool moment, though. Um, uh, my f- go ahead. Probably my second favorite. Uh, moment in the episode was his stillness it was so funny i wanted to talk to about uh remember when before the beast titan talked it was just ominous oh god yeah and like was quiet and just watching aaron like have a still face like making the realization and just the way like he kind of like dove dude that was so cool that was hand drawn you could tell um, oh for sure it was cool but it was very like oh like he's like he's just he seems animalistic. Yeah, he's entering Ultra Instinct you know? from Dragon Ball <laughs> Super. He's he's not thinking. He's just attacking. He's no. just attacking. No, no, no. But uh, I mean, I think it's like I got it backwards. But but yeah, he's much more calm, cool, collected. You know, I love that we got to hear the internal monologue of him, like connecting the dots and putting yeah. the puzzle together. Like, what the fuck is going on here? Mm-hmm. Also, some pretty slick animation of Mikasa keeping the uh, the Warhammer Titan busy. Yep. You know, blowing up the kneecap, getting in, getting out of the way a few times. That was pretty slick. I like that moment. Just Picasso doing Mikasa. Yeah, just Ackerman's <laughs> doing Ackerman stuff. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, so Aaron Aaron finds the power adapter. He rips it out. Literally, like, unplugging somebody from the Matrix. He just fucking <laughs> yeah. falls over. Which was hilarious. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, like you said, the you know, it reminded me of the Annie thing. Mm-hmm. I wonder why he's going to try and eat it. Does that mean they... They figured out how to break Annie's shell, or was he just confident that he could he could chop that, you know, chomp it down or something? Because he was going to to eat her. Yeah, it didn't look like he was going to crush it. it. It's like you said, like it looked like he was just going to kind of like throw it back. So, I, uh, oh, maybe that works if you just swallow her whole. <laughs> but you know what? When you say that, that makes me think to the moment uh, last episode where they kind of reveal Annie's dad. Yeah. So I'm wondering if they're gonna. Kinda, interesting bring you know, her back. maybe maybe they did figure out how to get annie out and maybe she has been out interesting that'd be pretty gnarly to find out i guess they have no more serum eh, to make anyone a titan well they um so if i remember correctly in season three it's revealed the serum is just titan spinal fluid gross mm. enough as that is so they could technically just get it from aaron or armin mm. if they want to I, I don't know that would be wild if someone just drew, like there's a new female titan yeah that would be oh dude yeah. imagine it's like mikasa or some shit um, oh no yeah. she's too valuable but but that would be crazy indeed she cut her hair short like annie though oh oh she's uh <laughs> she have to she have to dye it to be a perfect clone but no yeah. that but that would be interesting um i have a theory and i think it's probably so good that it's gonna spoil everything I'm kidding. But I do have a theory. It's a total long shot. But imagine I'm right and I fucking crack it wide open. The Let's whole show. You ready to hear it. this shit? I'm ready. Okay. Aaron goes for Willy and eats him, clearly hoping that Willy's the Warhammer Titan because he has sure. no other reason to eat. Right? Yeah. And then he cl- clearly has the goal of eating the Warhammer Titan in this episode. He tells Mikasa, do this. If it works, I can eat this bitch. Hmm. Aaron already has two titans in him. He's got the founding titan and the attack titan. My theory that I present unto you now is that he's gonna. His goal is to swallow all fucking nine of them. Not to become some perfect war machine, but to, to hide, hide it. To hide the power and in, continue to the tradition of having the powers inherited. But one person has that blessing slash curse, so that it takes titans. And you know everything they inflict upon humanity out of the out of the game entirely. Boom. I 100% buy that. That I don't think that this is far fetched. I've been thinking that 
as well. <laughs> Sorry, Isayama. Beat you to the end of your own game. <laughs> um, no, that's that's, that's, to- that's totally believable. I, I could definitely see that. You know, because... That's the thing. It's so strange. Like, do you think... If that is the case, let's just roll with... The, that is... Let's just roll with the, the idea that that is fact. Sure. Is... Aaron just... Is he just okay with killing all these people just at the sole goal of, like, stopping future violence? Typical, like, ends justify the means type mm. shit. Like, it's which... Some, a pretty significant villain, like an antagonist. Like a yeah, very, it's a uh, twist. Yeah. But if it's true, if it goes that way, it definitely jives with all of this fucking... All of breaking this, the cycle. Uh, breaking the, the cycle, thing, right? Yeah. And all of the war themes that are going on, like... You know, everything about this season has been there are no winners in war. Radicalization is a radicalization is a circle. You know, conflict will never stop unless X, Y, Z happen. You know, like the dehumanization of the enemy is a huge one. But do you think Aaron, like Aaron's a smart cat, like he he has to know that he just signed the death sentence for everyone on parody, and then also probably future any Eldians going so, forward. So, yeah, we haven't talked about this. Magath has this great exposition line, which we mentioned earlier, which is basically like, I hope you enjoy the win now because you've mm. guaranteed your future loss. So, I don't know. I mean, I I don't think... I can't believe that it's that black and white. I mean, it it is that black and white if this is the whole plan, but yeah. I don't think that Aaron would make such a dumb plan It could, because no. everything that we've seen from him so far is that he's seriously matured and that he's seriously grown and seems to possess some adult intellect and he's not thinking with his young teenage brain at this point. So he has to know doing this in front of all these world leaders would unite them against him specifically and, and the rest of the island, right? So what's his move? Like, I, yeah, I, I have no idea what it is, but I can't believe that he would be that short-sighted. No, I. there has to be something we're missing or just, you know, there's there's I, I, we're so many pieces of the puzzle away from having like the bigger picture it's it, it's it's not frustrating but like at, when you think about it we have 10 episodes left mm-hmm. as of now like we, we can there's you know the, maybe there'll be more but we don't know that yeah but if if the case is there's only 10 more so we're we're almost halfway through we're getting mm-hmm. close to halfway through so that which is a very scary thought mm-hmm. but um yeah no aaron uh aaron really went dark on this one <laughs> like a lot yeah, it, man, the women the fly- and children stuff yeah <sighs> it was it was just it's like you said it was right back to like the first episode of season one. pandemonium it was just it was insane absolutely insane and, and the real violence like the the off-screen violence like you know i had laughed laughed i had laughed last episode when aaron like kind of came out and like the rock hit the one guy in the face like that was just a, <laughs> no, honestly that was just like a little taste of what was going to happen this episode like everyone was being trampled crushed by stone like the and uh, yeah just such craziness. A, i agree and such i know we said this already but such a good narrative decision for us to know some of the people that died because if it was just like a crowd of yeah people you know we've seen that a bunch and like you know the audience can get kind of numb to it like i you know it's violence but violence kind of without stakes if you have no investment in the character the fact that it's udo and sophia the fact that we don't know um, if Reiner and Falco are safe, Falco especially, you know, they invested so much in that character and he did such a good job. Um, There's definitely some going to be some plot armor in play there. And, uh, yeah. But, like, if Aaron had kind of... If they were in the same room, like, would... If, you know, if uh, Galliard and Piet couldn't transform in that mm-hmm. tight space, like, what's the reason that it wouldn't kill Reiner? you know yeah, right I away know. And, and falco as well so that's i'm curious to see where they're at that'd be a very weird turn Way if they go. just yeah. killed them off <laughs> um but we, we should wrap up um the just this last bit of the episode because i have you know a couple quick thoughts um aaron goes for the eat gets yeah. ambushed by galliard right we talked about that already or we mentioned it in the summary but yeah. there's a another cool detail i don't know if you caught this Right as Aaron is throwing the Warhammer Titan in his mouth, before he's ambushed, there's a... Or he's, like, you know, ripping her out of the cord. There's an overhead shot. It's maybe a frame. Maybe a frame oh, and a half of yeah. Levi. Yeah. In this, you know, I love that Levi's there, and he's the only one with the scout 
uh, cape and the only one wielding blades, like old school. Um, but, but he's, he's the master. Why? Why would he give up the weapon that he is truly mastered over everyone else? You know. Yeah, and like, he's just lying in wait. Yeah. Because he's totally. I think he's totally dialed in. He knows that if something's gonna go wrong, this is the moment. This mm-hmm. is the critical moment. And they even go so far as to like he's holding the blades. The, they show you this intentionally in this overhead shot. He's holding the blades in the exact same way. Like he holds one backwards. Um in the exact same way that he uses to swing around and cut Galliard's mouth open when mm. uh, when he you know goes for the bite on uh, on Aaron's neck. That, Very cool moment. That had that me was... scared for a sec. Yeah. And was unfortunately another kind of badly animated sequence, especially Aaron's Titan. Um, yeah. Getting bit. Yeah. That didn't look great. But uh, the you know it it was so fast that you didn't notice, and I hope or I don't know if you did notice. But Levi's entrance and him like landing with all that, um, all that thrust, all that, all that, whatever the word is, inertia, velocity. That's what I'm looking yeah. for. All hand drawn, looks fucking awesome. Yeah, you gotta make Levi. You gotta hand draw Levi. Yeah. In in the and that was that was an, like an, a really cool moment too. Like just kind of puts the hubris of Galliard kind of at the forefront. Mm-hmm. In, like right at the tail end of the episode and i think that was kind of what leads into like what's to come next week um galliard has no idea what he's facing right now he like piek was stunned she was like legitimately scared when like you know the, the scouts and the odm gears going off galliard was kind of like oh like it's happening like he just had like a like a war ready face mm-hmm. he is like he's literally his the first like parody person he's going toe to toe with his Levi like poor guy <laughs> poor guy Galliard we hardly knew ye yeah top no break. but but I agree man you could tell yeah. he he goes from 100 to zero real quick yeah. um he's you know he's ready to be the hero and then like did you you know it only happens in the span of a couple seconds but the coordination of the team surprised me when everyone's swarm when a titan shows up and everyone swarms on him yeah but not only best that, moment of the episode even like the, there are quick little chess moves like Galliard goes in on Aaron, who's, and then he has his mouth cut open. Aaron headbutts him backwards into a building, and Galliard slashes slashes Aaron away to get away. He grab he goes to grab a building. A thunder spear appears. He's knocked on his ass. Yep. Like it all happens quick. The coordination between the scouts you could tell he's not ready, and then he has like you know he has this incredulous moment where he's just like, oh fuck, what is ha- oh what what is happening? I'm a titan. Why the hell would they bring Why would a fight human, to me? Yeah. And he doesn't realize, like, they've literally been bred for this. They've been living, you know, this living nightmare of having to go after things that they've been outsized by. Yeah, you are prime, prime hunting for them. Like, yeah, it's, what an episode. And then, what what a great way, what a great way to end it. I'd like to note, we don't see, you know, we already mentioned Falco and Reiner, but we don't see Falco, Reiner, Armin, or Zeke at all. That's true. Um, We can probably assume, you know, that, like, the pe- you know Falco and Reiner there's going to be something crazy going on there Armin I hope shows up and Zeke I'm guessing definitely will well I know Zeke's going to show up because in the stinger yeah uh, so Ze- Zeke's in that we the, should the shortest stinger briefly yet talk about that yeah so in the preview for the next episode it's again hard to predict though right it's just more mm-hmm. conflict yeah but like uh, like you just said the Beast Titan is definitely there you, I think it's like in the first like when it cuts to like kind of gray screen mm-hmm. um also i found it the maybe i'm remembering this incorrectly but usually they up top on the stinger they say what the next episode is called yeah i didn't but catch they, that either but but this time they did it at the end yeah what's it called do you remember assault assault yeah you're yeah. right they, they did so usually that usually kind of does like it's credits and then it goes to like kind of like next week on it'll say sometimes i think it usually has like the number of next week's episode and then the Mm -hmm. name of the episode and then it kind of cuts to like you know what we're going to see but it kind of it just it still showed that gray screen had some you know japanese writing on it and then uh plays out also the shortest one yet i've noticed was kind of like in out in like 10 seconds Mm -hmm. and then and then assault and i was like oh interesting yeah so this one is hard to make predictions for in the immediate episode it just feels like there's gonna be an assault involved i'm comfortable saying that yeah (laughs) but 
I'm guessing some casualties. Galliard feels like he's ripe for beheading. Um, no, he's slippery. You think There's, he's getting out? Yeah, I think he's getting out. I think Zeke is going to save his ass, guaranteed. God, I or love... fit, you know, it would be really fitting what? if Reiner saved. Yeah, I'm super interested to see what Reiner does in reaction to what's happening. I wonder if he's watching. That would be really interesting too, just to or see what was going on, because he's probably yeah. still kind of st- like he was shell shocked by Aaron. Yeah, he might be. Tr- you know, he might not know which side to take. He might, you know, be confused. He might be in danger. He might be straight up injured because uh, yeah. of what happened. Um, it feels like also that you know the Beast Titan and Levi are going to be in close proximity. You know, one of them definitely wants a rematch. Or I'm guessing both of them do. Mm. Um, you have to wonder if that's on Levi's mind because that was definitely the thing that pissed him off last time is that the Beast tide, Titan got away. Yeah. Is he going to sacrifice the mission to try and uh, finish that or take care of old business or will it happen organically? It's hard to say. It looks like the entire next episode is conflict. Yeah. In, in house and, uh, and like against the enemy. I'm, I hope there's a scene where if there's like a, mo- like a moment of reprieve where, you know, some words are kind of like shouted at Aaron. Like I'd like to see where everyone stands on the scout side. That's yeah. what I'm most looking forward I to. T- I totally agree. I'd really love, you know, we, I don't know if we'll get it next week, but I'd like a moment of finding out what the hell they've been doing for four years. How long has Aaron been here? What is his relationship with the scouts like right now? Et cetera, et cetera. And also how are the scouts going to get out of this? And what is the, what's the play here? Is it just try and end the war tonight? <laughs> I don't think so. Um, so I'm curious what the play is, the you know, the larger one. Yeah. But I think that just about does it for this episode. I think so. Okay, guys, thank you very much for listening. Um, again, Grant and I are super stoked to see, you know, how many people connected and listened this week from all over the world. That has been super badass. Um, keep interacting with us on Reddit and all forms of social media. You know how this works. Like, share, comment, subscribe, and, you know, support the show in whatever way you feel is best. Um, but that is definitely how we get to, you know, get new listeners and, you know, gives us encouragement to continue doing this. Um, we'll upload what next Wednesday. We'll probably stay on that schedule. So stay tuned and we'll see you next week. Cheers. Bye. Bye, guys.